Hey, are you letting the wrong things take up headspace in your mind? Hey, I'm Todd with Ready Your Future, and this is another Bible devotional with a preparedness application. We've been looking at the life of Abraham, and the last episode we talked about how the Lord had told Abraham that he was going to go check out Sodom and Gomorrah and see what was there. And so in this one, we get to see what is going down in Sodom and Gomorrah and what happens. I think a lot of us know what, uh, what, what goes down, but uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and read. I mean, I'm not going to read the whole uh, chapter and everything that happens. I just want to read a portion, probably about 10 verses here. So we're going to go ahead and jump to Genesis chapter 19, and we're going to read verses 12 to 22. Then the two men said to Lot, whom else have you here? Now, the two men are the angels that are there that are going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So whom else have you here? A son-in-law and your sons and your daughters and whomever you have in the city, bring them out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place because their outcry has become so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws who were to marry his daughters and said, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But appeared to his son-in-laws to be jesting. Hey, have you ever been so... I just want to I just want to stop on that one just for a second. Have you ever been so excited about something or so serious about something, maybe even about preparedness, that people are like, man, you're kind of crazy, you're kind of nuts. And that's basically what's happening here with the guys that are going to be his son-in-laws, right? So... When morning dawned, the angel urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. So we have been going like all night long. This has been an all-night affair, talking about what's going on, and hey, we need to get out of here, and getting ready. Verse 16, but he hesitated. He hesitated. Man, that just, that just is crazy. He hesitated. So the men seized his hands, and the hands of his wife, and the hands of his two daughters, for the compassion of the Lord was upon him. And they brought him out and put him outside the city. When they had brought them outside, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you and do not stay anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, Oh no, my lords, now behold, your servant has found favor in your sight. And you have magnified your loving kindness, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains for the disaster will overtake me and I will die. Now behold, this town is near enough to flee to, and it is small. Please let me escape there. Is it not small, that my life may be saved? He said to him, Behold, I grant you this request also, not to overthrow the town of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of this town was called Zor. And actually, there's a little bit more that I wanted to read, and I didn't get all of that there. So let me go ahead and keep uh, reading verse 23 to 26. The sun had risen over the earth when Lot came to Zor. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But his wife from behind him looked back and she became a pillar of salt. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's talk a little bit about this one here. Um, Man, that, that just that last piece, I wanted to make sure that I, that I got that. So here's, here's the thing. We know that Abraham knew that Lot was in the Jordan Valley and more than likely he was in Sodom. Abraham knew that that was going to be a very bad place. And so he talked with the Lord and said, are you going to destroy the, the righteous with the wicked if there's 50 righteous people? And he got the Lord all the way down to 10 people. Well, they get to the the angels get to Sodom and Gomorrah, and they, they the outcry is so bad, and there is not ten people that is like, okay, the Lord says we're going to destroy this, and the thing is, is that they didn't want to leave. That was that they hesitated. They hesitated to leave, and that just kind of always gets gets to me a little bit because Lot grew up in Abraham's household, and he knew what was right in the things of the Lord. But here's the thing. Here's one of the biggest points is he didn't guard himself from the sin all around him. Not only did he not guard himself and not only did he not guard his wife and his kids, they were all there. And that was one of the things like this place is, is so important to us that we don't want to leave. Although they are being told by angels that they are going that they're going to destroy the city. Listen, when we allow ourselves to be in that wrong place 
for such a long time, it begins to blind us from what is truly important. It begins to blind us from what is truly important in the things of God. So you think about the things that you're reading, think, think about the things that you're watching, think, think about the things that you're listening to. If you are going so far off that it is, it is blinding you to the things of God, then you really need to think about what you need to move away from because you don't want to be hesitant to the move of God. You don't want to be hesitant to the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. But when we allow ourselves to be in those in that place for such a long time, right, that sin or those things that take us away from God, we need to we need to to really evaluate that. So we really need to purposefully reflect on the things that you are allowing to take up time in your headspace. You purposely need to take time to say, okay, am I spending too much time in this? Am I spending too much time in this? Am I not spending too much time maybe in, in the word of God? Some people, some some believers go to church, you know, for an hour on Sunday and that's all they ever get of God. But then they're putting hours of crap on TV and hours of crap on, you know, podcast and, and reading all kinds of junk online. And I get it. You know, I, I consume a lot of content out there. I'm a kind of a news junkie as well, but I'm very careful about what I I, I, I allow in versus what I'm allowing the, the Holy Spirit and God to put in. And I, I'm very purposeful about praying and reading my Bible. Listen, one of the scriptures on this is Philippians 4, verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, actually, let me just read it to you. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things things. And I think that's important because the longer you dwell on something, the longer it affects you. It's the same kind of idea when you are hanging out with certain people. You hang out with those people that are leaders, you are going to become a leader. You're going to get those characteristics. You hang out with people that are um, I'm just thinking of a, of, of a story back in my high school days. There was this one girl who it seemed like every year she rotated friends. And one year she was like with her preppy friends. And I, that's a word back from the day, right? And so she dressed like a prep, right? Another, another year she was, she was like, she hung out with stoners, stoners and stuff. And back then you could smoke in, in high school and stuff. And so there was an area where they would smoke and she was there and her clothes, she dressed, she dressed like a stoner. She didn't dress like a prep anymore. She dressed like a stoner. And then another year she like hung out with people that were in FFA and, 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 con and they listened to country music. And all of a sudden she was wearing big belts and, and uh, she was wearing the, you know, the, the tight, the tight, what are those Rockies? I can't remember what they were and, and Justin Ropers and all that back in the day. Right. And so it, you, if you went to her closet and you were to look in her closet and she, you would see all these different types of clothes, like who, are, who are you really? And we got to be careful because we hang out with people and it's like, who are we really? Those people that we hang out with. So whether they're leaders, whether they're into music, what, you know, whether they're good people, you know, church people, um, maybe they're, they're into bad things. They're going to have an effect in our life. And the same thing that we allow in our mind, those things are going to affect us. And here's the deal. The longer you dwell on the wrong things, the longer you dwell on sin, the harder it is to get out. Let me, uh, I want to read... 1 John chapter 2, verse 5 to 7 with you really quick here. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but it is from the world. The world is passing away and also its lust, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. It's a great scripture verse and one that hopefully everyone can apply to their lives. So let me uh, let me go ahead and jump into the prepper application here because I really, really want to, as someone who believes in preparedness, I really want to say that the application here is you need to bug out and you can't hesitate. But that really doesn't align with what I was saying as far as what the believers. And you can you can't apply it. Maybe maybe some other time I'll I'll apply apply that. Really, what I want to talk about here is as people who believe in preparedness, we need to be careful about what we put our inside of us as far as preparedness goes as well. Not just the spiritual things, right? Not just the spiritual and the and 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 the, you know going to church and hanging out with people that influence us in the right way, but 
Also, the things about preparedness, because there's a lot of things in preparedness that don't line up with uh, with the Bible. There's a lot of things that do. There's a lot of you know people out there that are putting out great content and great information. But we got to be careful because it's not only just the preparedness content, but it's also the news that we hear and all the things that are out there. We need to make sure that we keep a balanced life. And we don't allow the things that we keep hearing, right? Even if we're like the end of the world type stuff, the, the economy and, and this and that and, and, and what's happening in Russia and what's, all the different things that are happening in the world, you know, re- Ukraine and whatever we can throw out there. All the politics that happen, you know, the global scale, what happens on the national level and what happens on you know, the local level and then what happens on your own personal level. We need to make sure that we keep a balanced approach to life. And, and, and we don't wind up, it's all about preparedness, it's all about the end of the world, it's all about the, you know, the, the, the poop hitting the fan, and we just go around you know, with, our, with our heads, just you know, the headspace is all about waiting for the world to blow up, right? And so there's preppers out there who won't go in public, there's preppers out there who don't enjoy life because they're always waiting for the hammer to drop. There's people out there that won't go on vacation or they won't do anything fun because all of their money has to go to preps. And I get it. I understand you need you, you need to be prepared in that way. But you also need to stay balanced, right? We don't want to be people that are just waiting for the end of the world to, to, to come. You know, we, we have this great world. We need this great life. And we want to make sure that we're able to enjoy this world while we're here, right? And whatever whatever that means. So hopefully that is uh, it's been a blessing to you. You got the the the, the believer side of it, and you also have uh, the preparedness side of it as well. Um, we just have to be careful to make sure that we live balanced lives. And and I'm speaking from experience because it's really easy to get sucked into all the preparedness, all the alternative news, all of that, and that's all it is. I've been there, done that, and I'm just speaking from experience. You want to live a balanced life. All right, guys, let me go ahead and pray with you. Father, I pray for my preparedness friends. I thank you so much that they have uh, listened to this episode, and I pray that it does uh, touch them in their heart and in their mind, and they do think about the headspace and what they allow in their minds and in their hearts, Lord, the things that drive them to be the people that they're supposed to be. I pray that you help us and protect us and and guide us in the, the life that we're supposed to lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you're looking for more preparedness uh, information, then I always have that over at Ready Your Future. But if you're looking for information to help you grow in your faith, I'm going to have that below in the description. And you can go ahead and click on that. Well, you know, ways to read the Bible, prayer, and other things there that will help you. Even a, a devotional, uh, a free devotional that, they, that you can get. So it'll be down in the description. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me on this episode. We'll catch you on the next one. God bless you. Peace.